distinguished and esteemed speakers, and I'm very much nervous. I was trying to say very much pleased to be in front of you, but I'm very much nervous now. So I felt much better doing the translation. So to be a speaker right now is another task which I hope I may not be able to do justice for what I have been given as opportunity here. So first of all, before I get into my presentation, I would like each one of you to observe a moment of silence. And uh, the reason is, uh, at this time, 6.55 million people had been actually taken away with the COVID-20. And today there was an addition of another 1,240. So remembering all of them in your mind, let's observe a moment of silence. And let's dedicate all our virtual and hundreds merits to all of them. And uh, now, my uh, topic is nothing like brain twister or anything like that. But I would like my presentation to become something that should melt your brain. And then each one of us would be able to become friends in our spiritual life. So, this is not a deep research presentation, but it also has some elements of finding. And uh, so which I proceed now. And first of all, I'm very much, very much thankful to Center for Bhutan and Jainist Studies. Since the inception of Vajrayana Buddhism, I have been doing my part as a translator, and that will be this spirit. And uh, our His Excellency Dr. Karma Ura has been my one of my wonderful mentors. And it is because of him I'm actually standing in all of in front of such a uh, wonderful and extraordinary audience here. And now uh, I'm going to be talking about what I have been doing for the last three years since the inception of COVID-19 as well. So uh, Bhutan has done a project, Bhutan makes it. By the way, all of these, and uh, everything was actually kind of uh, involved, that if we only go to this. So, what we have done is actually to recreate long term projects, collected works through Buddhist calligraphy. And uh, this will transport become one of the first manuscripts. Uh, about the launching of our works in order to be found in town. And uh, now who is launching our town? I'm not going to spend any time here. Just please take a capture of this screenshot. I'm giving you 15 seconds. And then I move to the next. Oh, I must give you one more chance. Yeah. Oh, then I must speak a little bit. Long term, long term. If it is not long term, long term, I will be actually standing here to do this by this kind of presentation. So, long term, long term is actually deeply, deeply connected to the town. And, uh, like, we, in this conference particularly, we all of a uh, sudden, very unexpectedly, and then very, very auspiciously and very lucky, our Arabia His Majesty all of a sudden showed up. And then we got very, very close and personal audience. And I was quite moved when His Majesty stared at me and then he said, Oh, I know you. So it's wonderful that way. And this his Majesty that you have met is also connected directly, directly to Long Chenpa. So Long Chenpa uh, came to Bhutan as well, and he spent over a decade, and he performed so many wonderful activities here. But one of the finest aspirations that Long Chenpa did was actually he had an aspiration that in future I will come back. I love this country. I will come back. 
And not just that, he wrote the beauties of Bhutan, expressing the landscape, topography, all this. And eventually, he did come back. And who was that guy? He was the one who swing, you know, used to swim, I mean, never so freaking lions. <laughs> he, you know, he uh, turned uh, cold running water, right, river into a burning lake. See, such was the specialty of Kamalipa. And through Kamalipa's descendancy, we have the root, the heating of our His Majesty's. So we are actually all under the rather long term path. And if you are going to go a little further, Pema Levenzel. Pema Levenzel was actually one of the pioneering uh, sages of that who revolutionized the entire teachings of Guru Pama Sambhava. Whatever the teachings were not able to, uh, not possible for Guru to uh, spread that day, he had it done to Pema Levenzel. And the coming of Pema Levenzel was actually prepared by the Guru Pama Sambhava himself. In some days he had a wonderful daughter Wonderful daughter, eight years old. You know how much you would love your daughter. I can know, I do know personality, because I have a daughter. And how much you would have actually cared. So, Chisum Gilson was heartbroken. His child died at the age of eight years old. And then Guru said, No, don't worry, I'll take care of the rest. And then, supernaturally, Guru met. Sajan Kama said, the teacher of Tissum Gilson's dearest daughter, as the future custodian uh, of his innermost teachings, called as the heart drops. We are talking heart drops. We are not talking about tear drops. Heart drops. You know, when the heart melts and drops something, that is heart drops. So, this is all about the history. And, uh, I'm going to be, uh, what we are doing here in Bhutan is the reproduction or the recreation of octopus this many times. So these are the numbers of times we have. And uh, the last section, class 17 times there is a blockchain uh, teachings, three words. It is uh, not uh, the direct teaching, so there's something wrong to that blockchain part. It's the Buddha's teachings regarding the blockchain. But we had, uh, we actually, Telegraphed it as well because long term past doors are open, this place. So there is so much of a connection, and wonderfully, the, the outcome is in the last three years we have been working and managed to produce what you see on the, on the table here just next to me. We have just like this, it's just the one, it's just one of them. I have 20, uh, 29 old uh, right in the shrine. So these are the uh, products of uh, three years of effort. And uh, I will be just giving some uh, background. Uh, then, so what are the benefits of such uh, kind of these efforts? So we have a preservation of the art of calligraphy. The why we did this project is number one. It is, it is going to be some sort of a preservation default. Like our calligraphy is actually kind of a die, almost a dying art. And it has been revolutionized and overtaken by the modern computer technology. So uh, using calligraphy has become some kind of a, I don't know what you call that. I mean, you know, something that is not very really necessary, but we find it necessary and traditional art of making letters. So we wrote this uh, long term of books on each four years that paper that were produced here in Bhutan. So we were able to again do so many things to prolong the sustainability of this uh, paper producing uh, methods as well. And uh, traditional usage of paper Maybe this is bio-friendly as well. Maybe environmental friendly as well. But we are not using metallic pen or a plastic pen. We use a cane pen. You know, it's a bamboo kind of a plant. 
especially the really good for uh, making that pan to break the stairs. Then we went out of, we went to bed with ink, then polishing of the papers. Then there are the art of making patches, how you make this size, how you shape this. <laughs> then uh, one more special thing is like today, it has become so easy for us to buy clothes and then you know, stitch it into, stitch them as labels, pleasure labels. But before us, we didn't do that. We had it hand woven by the entire, you know, these uh, ladies who did this, uh, made this pleasure uh, labels are scattered all over the country. We wanted to make connections to your turn about every corner. So we, you know, we asked them that they didn't know what to do, or if they didn't, we did uh, introduce them. And then, most of this works, then we got it where it actually is, came as a form of a contribution without having to spend much on them as well. And uh, the reading of bells, so this page up will be basically, it needs one uh, belt to see. In order to keep it uh, intact and then in a shape, you have to use that belt. And that belt has also been uh, woven. And uh, we also met uh, buckles, silver buckles. You'll be seeing them as I see. We are the process. We have to make page of color. And they, that is an art which only we have it in Bhutan, but it is also some form of dying art. So we have to do all these things. We have to uh, make uh, spatial arrangements to source this uh, wooden box as well. It is uh, actually cypress, made from cypress. And then see the gonga, which is actually used as a level uh, for recognizing the volumes. Now, normally today we use some modern fancy clothes and then we stitch it. And it's called polyism, but it's like every piece can be handled. There is no stitching involved. And these designs were done not by us, the ladies of the time did that. And now, as we head into writing the text, of course we had to use ink. So some folios needed to be uh, written in gold, especially the beginning, the title text, we wrote it with gold, and we used these gold pellets. And then the one you're seeing in the center here is that we it's considered to be one of the authentic bone relics of Longchen Dhamma. And then we crushed it in the powder. There were some uh, different different feedbacks on that, but we decided to do that. And we just crushed it in the powder and mixed it to this uh, with saffron water. And we mixed it with the water ink that we use for writing the calligraphy. So hence, this little piece of book, what you see on the table right now, it represents the holy spirit and mind of the world, so the other of Manchin It's no different, no different than the actual of Shema. The born relic is there, the speech relic is there, the enlightenment relic, all the holy spirit and mind, and uh, you name it, all the specialties of Manchin Shema in China. Uh, and capsule and capsule to this little bit of all of So we have cut it off like that. <coughs> sure. no, and some uh, like there is also economic opportunities as well. Considering the professional calligraphers, you know, last three years we have been locked down, hit by pandemic, just like everybody in the world. And these people who were involved in they didn't have any problem. Because as they they were sustained in for three years. We have been really, really helping them. And we're putting in the young, a younger generation, so it's like really talent. There are only about four people who are trained by them to be Jubri Mushi as an expert calligrapher. And uh, they were invited as a mentor, and then we had the young stars. So that was also something which we can look forward for their future contribution. Then the wages for the villagers, calligraphers, and the adaptation of technology was also another. And some researches related to 
they provide the production of these calligraphic boards. So one thing what we could do is actually adaptation of technology was also interesting because this pro uh, project required 120 centimeters. 120 millimeters for all temples, weapons, and some uh, ten of or uh, six of them were nuns, nun scholars from the nun group. So everybody is actually well represented in this project. And uh, 30 calligraphers. So basically, if you have to produce this kind of a work, we need to sit down in one big hall and then do that. But because of the technology, we were all scattered wide apart. Everywhere in the on the we were scattered. I was in Thailand. I haven't seen this text, cut this text for the last two years old. And yet I am doing the role of a chief editor. And then I still when I came here, this volume is a light of the shine, smiling at me. So how powerful that was. And research in the sense like we were able to hunt any form of any word, you know, versions available. Different different uh, printouts, different different uh, uh, print versions and all that. Whatever we try to get it, we you know try to find it out. And uh, I think this reproduction has done the most comparative and critical vision actually. We have researched everywhere, wherever it is possible. So, still there is a, something we can extend further if we want more help to produce this kind of projects. Uh, we can replicate this to any other projects as well. So these are the process of making pages. This, this guy is making uh, the cover, and this uh, lady is making this, uh, uh, preparing the light level in order to write the text in gold. So this is the modern technology involved into this uh, pension production as well. So this is basically how we use it. All the calligraphers will write it down and then take an image and then we will be distributing to our forum of our editors. So spiritual benefits are also the calligraphers and particular editors have the liberty to read the entire description. And also uh, like not need to explain more of this. So we are we were also conducting some more regular events to fundraise as well and we provided opportunities for anyone to come and pay respects. And they were there, see, including the highest authorities of the time we showed up and they were so generous in supporting this event. And also there were some things like meeting this week. So you know, we were actually told not to touch Washington's work. If you did that, some protectors will come and finish it. And uh, we have to also uh, look at our horizontal, for a way out of it. And luckily, this uh, lab on this production was here on the right stars. We can did it and do a little, and I will take the responsibility. And he issued us one for nature for doing that. And that was one of the um, gifts as well. See, we received the authority and my endorsement for many lamas, all the head lamas of the time. We received this endorsement. And finally, when uh, we were about to complete writing this, we uh, presented three, three volumes to his audience and also uh, his audience for the championship, and he did it his consultation for us. And we have his all this. These are the spiritual gateways of Bhutan. So they all uh, gave us the lessons. <coughs> and now the findings here is. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So uh, there is, like we found as we move through this, Mihokri Mushi is the one master who actually made some. Commentaries and made some editions, and he also even made some insertions into the text. And uh, instead of using square brackets, he used swastika signs. So these insertions would be found within these swastika signs. And uh, there was another issue like uh, this text, Kutar Tantra, Chudaba. Uh, many scholars claim this is a uh, writing of Long Chenpa. 
and we found this is not from Jesus. So we just excluded from the uh, Lord Jesus collected books. Because there is one text we read in the true assembly of the rest of the month, and there he rebels uh, something against someone else. And that text happens to be recorded in the land of Jupiter Vata, where he was actually very busy to be, uh, what do you call it, with the Vatalatus. And here in Bhutan, we included one more text, regarding uh, the small offering. And this text seems to have been written by the uh, Lord Chenma as a uh, gift for the local people. They might have approached the Lord Chenma saying, I have this protector, how many people do something? So he could have written it as a ritual for them. And then when he left to Tibet, this was not included in the text. Some might uh, not stay in all the these are the conditions. These are also some uh, screenshot. And of course, you have one more of you to be our center here. And this is our text I'm talking to you in this situation. We have to find one more thing. Please keep this in mind. We have to find one more thing. Long term, one makes so many citations. For example, I was personally believed to talk to myself. And in the future, I noticed, I met the uh, you know, comparisons and writings and citations. He had made 611 citations from different, different sources. 611 citations. And when I cross checked with other uh, normal, regular texts, there is so much difference. So it only points to the fact that there are some unedited, translated texts in some way it used to be there. Because he is called a Sunday Lutmaw. So that time he was summarizing or, or memorizing those texts and then he wrote it for them. So we want to hunt for those manuscripts. If we can get at least anybody who wants to take the task of more, very well done. Uh, that's, uh, that's, sorry, could you tell me if I don't stop getting off of the Okay, now, yeah, this is the thing. And thank you. <laughs>